the FMCG space, uh, basically staples and even discretionary for that matter. Abhinish Roy, Executive Director, Novama Institutional Equities is joining in. And the reason we've called in Abhinish is that we're all hearing about these El Nino concern, perhaps inflation being really sticky, uh, and then therefore also rates perhaps being higher. Abhinish, good morning. Great to have you on the show as always. Uh, you tell us, you know, it's been a bit of a curious patch. Usually when we have global disturbances, uh, risk off in the market, money quickly runs to, uh, you know, the staple stocks, your levers, Britannia's of the world. That's not really happened this time, perhaps because of these concerns, you think? Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, these stocks have uh, high FI ownership. Currently on the macro front for FMCG, one positive, one negative happening. So one positive, of course, we are seeing correction in the packaging cost, which will help in the also in the distribution cost because of the diesel prices also. So that's on the positive side. <clears throat> yes, currently unseasonal rainfall is happening in many states. What we have picked up is currently we need to wait for the data. Today, government has said that this un unseasonal rains don't seem to have much impact. But my sense is we don't have full data. Last year also wheat crops suffered because of very high temperature. This time the reason is different. So wheat crop could uh, see lower output this time, which is negative for food companies. But the good part is uh, palm oil uh, will be lower and distribution and packaging cost will be lower. So on an overall, my sense is still food companies will see margin expansion in FI24. Uh, on the stock performance, yes, high FI ownership and FI selling has been happening. But yes, these are defensive stock. And as of now, El Nino is a key monitorable. And uh, that would put rural recovery again at risk. We are seeing some green shoots. But my sense is in April, we'll have more clarity. And then in Q1 end and Q2, there could be an El Nino impact, which could again derail uh, rural volumes. OK, all right. Uh, uh, hi, Avnish. Uh, good morning. Avnish, uh, what about individual stocks? How do you approach them as of now, You know, given the current setup? Which are your top buys? So from a Q4 perspective, we expect uh, good numbers from uh, paint stocks. So Asian paints, Berger paints, we are quite positive. We also expect uh, margin expansion in Q4 and Q1 further because of the fall in the key raw material cost. Uh, apart from this, we continue to like ITC uh, and Godrej consumer. Uh, these will report good recovery again in Q4 and FI24 also currently good visibility on both ITC and Godrej consumer. Post that, we like Hindustan Unilever. For Hindustan Unilever in Q4, uh, we expect, again, double-digit kind of sales growth with a healthy balance of pricing and volume. And margin recovery will be sequential. In HUL's case, YOI margin recovery will start from Q1. Lot of the other FMCG company, margin recovery will start in Q4 itself. So these will be our topics in the staples and the paint space. So, Abhinesh, you're saying that margin recovery will continue to be a phenomenon in Q4. Uh, because of lower palm oil prices and lower distribution costs. Uh, what about volume? I mean, you mentioned uh, your expectations on lever. Are you expecting uh, good volumes to continue? But what about some of the other uh, frontline companies? Uh, what do you think is going to be the salient feature, so to speak, of uh, the fourth quarter when it comes to both volumes and margins? Right. For HUL, we expect for Q4 around 6 to 7% volume growth, which is slight acceleration from the 5% seen in Q3. My sense is this is not a pronounced rural recovery. This is more of a base effect helping many companies. Even for Dabur, for example, which had a minus three volume in Q3, our sense is it should be closer to the flattish, which again is an improvement. So for many companies, we see improvement. For paint stocks, we expect double date volume growth, double date sales growth in Q4 for the bigger paint companies. And margin improvement uh, will also happen because in Q3, the higher price inventory was still being used. Now that is, uh, definitely over. So for most companies, I think uh, the prices of raw material will be at the more lower level versus a Q3. So yes, uh, Asian Paints, Berger Paints, ITC, Goodrich Consumer, and Britannia, these will report the best uh, uh, numbers in our view. Uh, in terms of the laggards, our sense is uh, the hair oil companies and the liquor companies, they continue to be at the lower end in terms of strong, uh, operating performance. <clears throat> Right. Uh, Abnish, very briefly, any thoughts on uh, companies uh, in the QSR space, Devyani, Barbecue, etc.? Stocks have seen a fair bit of damage. Uh, good uh, prices to buy. Get in? Uh, good question. So we'll be uh, overweight on staples currently in terms of the QSR. Two issues, hyper competition, everyone is expanding. And second issue is definitely higher cheese prices. 
And now again, if wheat also gets impacted, that also remains a monitorable. So dairy has been extremely inflationary. So I would be underweight on uh, QSR. We'll be over it more on staples, more on paints. See, paint is also discretionary, but there it's a five-year cycle in terms of buying behavior. All these job losses in startups and IT, it's more impacting the QSR and the apparel rather than the paints. Okay, all right, Abnesh, appreciate you stopping by and giving us uh, your take on the sector. Look forward to having a chat with you in the near future. Well, uh, let's get the 90.